Today is January 12, 1996, and I'm speaking with Ladessa Walter at her daughter's home in Lapine, Oregon. We're talking about her experiences with the Shevlin Hickson Company of Bend, Oregon. This is tape number 12 of the Shevlin Hickson Oral History Project. My name is Ron Gregory, and the tape belongs to me. I'd like to begin this interview by asking you when and where you were born. Portland, Oregon, December the 8th, 1904. Okay. Uh, what were your parents' names? Emma and Arthur Chapman. Can you tell me something about them, their occupations, uh, characteristics? Well, We lived in Portland, and my father's health was poor. He had TB. They said he had to get out in the country, fresh air. And uh, so uh, they filed on a homestead at uh, it was Fremont then. It was all the different communities. Fremont, Lustine, Fort Ross, Overdale, and Oh, every section had a school, of course, for the kids. And this was located where? Well, do you know where Fremont is? Down in the Fort Rock area. Yeah. There was six miles of difference between Fremont and Fort Rock. And uh, we didn't have cars, weren't plentiful in those days, and so you just used a horse and buggy. So your mother and father then moved from Portland mm -hmm. because of your dad's health yeah. to basically the Fort Rock Valley mm -hmm. area. Okay, and when was that? I think it was 1909. No. Okay. So about five years after mm -hmm. you were born. Yeah. Uh, what did your, okay, you say that they filed on a homestead, mm -hmm. uh, then they farmed down there? Yes, we had a <clears throat> dairy farm. I know we had cows, ten cows we milked. And, uh, There was a creamery and a blacksmith shop at Fremont, a little hotel, a little store. And uh, was that your mother and father's? primary uh, occupation then was the dairy farm? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And that's how they made their living was yeah. through the cows mm -hmm. and selling the cream. Selling the cream, yeah. Okay. Uh, how many brothers and sisters in your family and what were their names? I had one sister. Her name was Eva. <clears throat> uh, did your parents bring you up to consider, to consider certain things in life important? I suppose they did. I don't remember doing anything wrong. <laughs> anything? Okay. Uh, let me ask you, what sort of family activities did you enjoy the most? Well, on the 4th of July, they used to go on... on uh, picnics we'd meet someplace up there the potholes or there was more water up around there then than there is now and uh, we had picnics and we had horse races and all this sort of just a regular old-fashioned did all the fourth of july all the communities uh 
or a lot of them from the Fort Rock Valley participate in, in that sort of thing? Yes, but not too much. Kind of they had their own because the horse and wagon, you didn't go too far. <laughs> it's kind of rugged down there. <laughs> yeah. But could I break in here? Sure. That's some of the things she might not remember what her parents taught her because when they went out there, as I thought about that when she was hesitating answering you, the uh, he was dying really. He had tuberculosis, and the doctors told him to go out to the high country. So here they had these two small kids and we're trying to make a living and then he died in 1918 so the there was a different focus besides that. I yeah. see yeah okay uh well you like the picnics then as far as the the family activities were there things that uh you like least doing uh oh yes we got to got together i had a a girlfriend that lived about a mile from us and I could remember us getting a big bottle of pop and sitting under a tree and drinking it together. <laughs> That's funny how that sticks in your mind. You didn't get pop very often. But you enjoyed that. Yeah, we enjoyed it. <laughs> Where'd you get the pop? I don't know. They must have shipped it in or something. I know it was a good-sized bottle. <laughs> and what flavor was it? I've forgotten that it was pink, I know. Okay, maybe <laughs> strawberry. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> okay, outside of the, the family, what sort of child activities did you most like to participate in? Well, I rode horseback. There used to be three or four of us that sit on our horses and ride and round and race a little. When you went horseback riding did you have any particular place that you went no we just wandered around in the woods didn't get lost mm -hmm. we lived just at the where we say when they said oh you lived on the desert I'd say no I lived at the edge of the timber <laughs> do you ever see any Indian artifacts down there yes we used to pick them up every once in a while. I know I had a tobacco can full and I don't ever know what happened to it. Long spears and little ones. And, and that used to be a, a outing to go and hunt arrowheads, after, especially after the wind blew, you know, it would uncover. Was this a family activity that you did? I don't remember my folks going on that. Just the young people. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, what kind of responsibilities did you have as a child? Well, we had chores like everybody else. You had, had to carry in wood and stack wood. I can remember, I guess it was green wood or something. We'd have to stack it so the air could go through it. You know, we'd make squares and so that it would dry. Mm -hmm remember that and um, of course as I got older I I milked cows I milked ten cows for a long time how'd you like that well I didn't mind it <laughs> how about house cleaning or things like that? well I had a sister who was older and she did that mostly I did the outside but I thought the kids, I can remember that yet, we had a cow, she had a, <clears throat> a slender wart on her tit. It was kind of in the way when you, well, I didn't think anything about that. And I thought, what's she doing with that? I'll just twist that off. So I thought, wow, she kicked me clear across. <laughs> I can remember that yet. And I thought, well, you're a crazy thing. You might have known that. <laughs> it would hurt. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Uh, as a girl, did you have uh, a way of earning any pocket money? You talked about uh, oh, going and getting a bottle of pop mm -hmm. with his friend. No, they didn't have no store clothes, so we didn't. When uh, my father would go, where did they go? Was it to Shanico when they first moved there or something? He'd always bring us back a sack of four-hound candy. And we thought that was really... <coughs> 
Well, Santa Cruz is a long way. Yeah, from that was a long way. Well, that's where the railroad came. Yeah. Came through. <laughs> And and so was there a reason he was going up to Shanico to the railroad to get supplies? Oh, okay, so uh, Fremont or Fort Rock didn't really have uh, no, they didn't have too much. A store later on. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> uh, did you contribute to the family income? Well, not then. I was just a kid. So, in a way, milking the cows yeah. was contributing oh, yeah. to the income. Yeah. Uh, where and for how long did you go to school? Well, I graduated in the eighth grade out there. Then I went to Portland, stayed with friends, went to high school. Okay. So, uh, did Fremont have a, a school up till eighth grade? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you went to the Fremont yeah. grade school, mm -hmm. okay. and then from there you went to Portland and stayed for four years went to do your high school? Yeah, Jefferson High School. That's a Negro settlement now, I can remember. The folks I stayed with, they, uh, a Negro couple and lived, moved across the street. And the folks I stayed with, they said, well, that's all right. I said, but there was a fellow on the corner. He just raised a fit. He said, I know how they work. One will move in, and then another will move in. He says, and soon, and that's right now. That part where we live now is the Negro section. Mm -hmm. and I said, <laughs> uh, who were these friends in Portland that you stayed with? They were, uh, Carlson was their name, Tilly and Charlie Carlson. And Tilly and my mother came from Sweden together as girls when they were 18. And so they were just like second parents, you might say. Mm -hmm. So your mother immigrated from Sweden to mm -hmm. the United States. What was her maiden name? Sundell. S-U-N-D-E-L. Could have been two L's, but I think it was just one. <clears throat> uh, at what time did homesteading in the Fort Rock and Christmas... Uh, Valleys take a turn for the worse. Do you recall? I don't remember the date, but it was when the when the drought came. You couldn't raise any enough hay or anything for your for your stock. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you moved there in 1909, was it, were things pretty good? Yes, the grass was lots of grass, bunch of grass, and one thing or another, but. Were there already uh, quite a few homesteaders there? Yes, there was about uh, every 160 acres, and then you could file on 320 after the few 160, yeah. okay. so which we did. And <clears throat> let's see, when now your father passed away, mm -hmm. in, when was it? Shucks, I know that as well as anything. <laughs> At the moment, I can't tell you. Yeah. I think it was 1918. I think that's what they were changing. Okay, so 1918. And, and how... Okay, yeah, just after, or close to after the First World War, the flu mm -hmm. epidemic. Yeah. Uh, how were things down there at that time? Were things still pretty good as far as uh, uh, conditions in homesteading? Or were they beginning to turn bad about that? Well, I don't remember. I was just a... kid, I guess. I didn't pay much attention. <laughs> okay. Uh, when did you leave the Fort Rock Valley or Fremont? When I married in 27. Okay. So you were there then from 
1909 until 1927. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and you continued working on your parents' dairy uh, after your father died. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and so uh, who was taking the product to market? I see you was somebody picked it up. I remember we had a, a little station or platform built out, and we put the the cream cans on that. And this fellow would come around and pick them up and take them to to uh, Fremont, and then they'd go to Lapine by stage or something. I don't remember. <coughs> So after your father passed away, then uh, was it just you and your mother and your sister on yes. the dairy, and and the three of you then were the ones who did the work out there and ran the the family business of the dairy. Right. Okay. And do you remember between those years, 1918 and say 1927, did you see? people moving out of the area because conditions were worsening? Yes, it was a lot moved out. They uh, couldn't make a living and they just left. There was houses here and there and where they just got up and left. They couldn't make it. Yeah. Lost a lot of money out there, a lot of people. Yeah. So, uh, oh, a lot of friends that you had down there just mm -hmm. packed up and moved, moved on. Okay. Uh, so, where did they go? Any, any idea? No, some had friends somewhere else and, and uh, I don't know where they moved. Okay. When when you got into the timber camp, do you ever remember bumping into people that were familiar from the Fort Rock Valley area that you'd known there? No, not that I remember. Okay. okay. So, whether those people then who moved away from their homesteads uh, that they may have moved into the timber camps. You just, you don't know. No. Okay. Uh, you mentioned that your your mother had immigrated here from Sweden. Uh, what about your father? Where did he come from? He was born in Iowa. That's about all I know. Okay. <clears throat> uh, how was it that you came to work for the Shevlin Hickson Company or live in a Shevlin Hickson camp? Well, because I married this Red Walter, and he was a what they called a Ledgerwood man. They had Ledgerwoods in those days, you know, those where he run one of those number three. Big piece of equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how long did you live in the camps? I think about six years. Mm -hmm. uh, so. And then I moved. To to a band, he got a job at the. There was a shutdown, and they didn't work for a few months, and so he took an examination for um, something. Anyway, he got a job at the post office when that old one first started. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> let's see, you you were still. Around Fremont in 1927. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it was after that time then that uh, you moved up into the camp. Okay, and when did you first meet, and where did you first meet your future husband? At a dance. Dance where? Well, let's see. Was it Lapine or? I believe it was at Lapine at a dance. And that was 
oh, about what time? Hmm. Well, we were married in 27, so it was before that. <laughs> okay. okay. A couple of years. All right. Did he ever come down and visit you at the, the dairy outside of Fremont? Yeah, he practically wore out a Chrysler Roadster. <laughs> uh huh. This was his Chrysler Roadster yeah. before you before you got married. Yeah. Yeah. Got okay. Married. So he had a car. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, what was your wedding like? Well, it was a home wedding. I was married at home, and there's a. Uh, lay preacher out there the name of George Hoffman and uh, he married us at home and we had a dinner afterwards and so on and then we left on a honeymoon I guess you would call it and it wasn't working then so we had we must have been gone a month Okay. Uh, again, you mentioned that your mother was Swedish. Were there any Swedish traditions that you practiced in your home? Any particular way you may have celebrated Christmas or Swedish baking? Not that I remember. Uh, did your husband work in the logging camps before you met? Before we met? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, he did. Where did he come from and how did he decide to work for the Shevlin Hickson Company? Well, he worked for them in, in Minnesota before they moved out there. He was a whistle punker. They called or something. Mm -hmm. And how old was he when he started working for them? Well, the whistle punk isn't very, wasn't very old. It seemed to me he was 14 or something. Okay. So he started at an early age. Yeah. <laughs> You remember where in Minnesota he came from? Kellier. That kind of runs in my mind. Kellier. Kellier. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> out here in in the Bend area, what kind of work did your husband do for the company? Well, he ran this ledger wood. Mm -hmm. He had these big machines. I think they had three. Ledger would they call him, and he run one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, so you moved into the camps then after 1927 or thereabouts. Yeah. Uh, where was where, where the camp located at that time? Or did it have a particular name? I don't know. It was three miles off the highway, I know, because the road was terrible. If you wanted to go to Bend or something to get that three miles to the... <laughs> Does Cliff Camp ring a bell? No. No. Okay. It wasn't too far from where the, what they used to call a stage station. Oh, okay. Summit? Summit yeah. Stage Station? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, how long did your husband work for the company? Hmm. I don't know. I couldn't give a... Okay. Well, that's all right. Uh, so he was working with the company back in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and when the company came out here, did he did he decided to come with them? Yes, I think so. That's a long time ago, you know. Your memory. Sure. sure. <laughs> Do you remember? He was in World War One, so he was in the service between the time he was whistle punk, and when he came out of the service, he must have went back to going back there. Okay. Okay. Well, I was born in 1931. They were married in 1927. She, uh, and I think I was about three years old when they moved into Bend, so that can kind of give you a little bit of time how long. Okay. Uh, but he came out here to work then after the First World War. After the first okay, so probably late 1918 or 1919, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Did he ever meet your father? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, did you or your husband have any relatives that lived in the camps? Yes, my husband's brother lived there, Harry. And what? And did his he, wife. And what did Harry do? What did he do? Well, my husband had run the ledger wood, and he worked on the other end, fastened around the logs. What do they call them? Whistle? No. What did they call those? Chokers. Choker setters. Yeah, choker yeah. setters. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, what were the working conditions like for your husband, uh, as far as a, a work day, the, the amount of time, or a work week? Well, I know he did a lot of Sunday work. He was up to him to keep the to keep the ledger wood running, and so he would often work on Sundays and things to keep it. So he did the maintenance. The maintenance, work on, yeah. Okay. And yeah. then uh, worked in the operations mm -hmm. and, uh, during the week. How many camps did you live in? Did you just live in the one I camp? I just lived in the one. They had just moved there when, and then we moved to Bend before they moved to the stage station, to the Summit Stage Station. Okay. How'd you like living there? What was it like? It was, uh, it was nice. Everybody got along and mm -hmm. played cards in the evening and so on. And, was there something in particular about it that you you really liked? Well, it was just life. You didn't dislike it. It was just that's well, the way it was. Sorry about how the ladies used to like to beat each other getting their laundry on the line on Lord's Day. Remember telling us about that? Yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> and this one lady always got hers out before everybody else, and everybody was trying to get their husbands off to work to get their laundry out and beat her, and then you found out she was doing it on Sunday night and had it ready to hang out. <laughs> and that's why she beat you up. I can remember you telling them about that. Yeah, yeah I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something you disliked then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> do you remember how much the company charged for the housing? Well, it just seems to me it was ten dollars a month. Okay. Now, did you, did you have one house, or did you fix another house onto it so that there were basically two there? No, we just had the one. They had porches like on them, and when they moved them, you know, they just fold up the porches to the house. And okay. Uh, and what about the roof? Was there a roof that came over the porch? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah. So the porch folded up, and mm -hmm. the roof over that must have folded mm -hmm. down. See, that shows it.
Did single men work in the, the camps with baskets? Oh, yeah. Uh, quite a few of them? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some were married, but some weren't. Yeah. Okay. So where did the, the single men live? They had what they called bunk houses. They have pictures someplace. The bunkhouse with the men sitting around. Do you have that, Mary? Yeah, I seen one of those albums because I saw it the other day. Oh. Because I was looking for those pictures of me on the porch. I couldn't remember where they were. Okay. <clears throat> Many camps kept livestock uh, on hand for a ready supply of fresh meat. No, no, they didn't. They didn't, huh? Okay. Uh, now, in many Pacific Northwest logging camps, <clears throat> oftentimes there was kind of a wide variety of people. Uh, there were, of course, Scandinavians, but in places in the Pacific Northwest, sometimes there were Chinese or there mm -hmm. were Japanese or Greeks, Italians. Uh, do you remember what the makeup of people's nationalities were in the camp? Remember any Asian? Any black? I was trying to think. I think they were Scandinavian. Okay, but you don't recall any Asians or any no. blacks or Hispanics? No. How about, how about Eastern Europeans uh, with, say, Austrian names or Polish names? Names like Prokopovich? Yes, there was names like that. Petronovich and... Did those folks, uh, did you all kind of live together, or did those folks kind of uh, <clears throat> live among the people that that were maybe from other places? Mm -hmm. No, they all lived together. There didn't seem to be any strife between them that I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember, now, folks that I've talked to old the makers and, and Clint Olson Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, I know them. They remember uh, a number of people, especially on the, the steel crew, as being from Eastern European countries, mm -hmm. uh, Austria or yeah. Yugoslavia. Uh, does that ring a bell with you? think of a name, but I don't like to <laughs> say it. Maybe I'm dreaming or something, but they used to call a certain uh, bohunks. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about that. Was there a particular reason? Well, they were just uh, uh, foreign to what the others were, and uh, they were nice people as far as that went. Mm -hmm. Clint said the same thing. Oh, did he? So, yes, he said, <laughs> we used to call him Boha. Yeah. Uh, I hated to say that. I was afraid it would... <laughs> no, no, that's, that's exactly, you know, what I... I if, if you don't include those sorts of things, you don't get a real full oh. picture. Oh. Uh, so those are the kinds of things that yes, oh. uh, are important <laughs> to hear. Uh, and no doubt they had their own name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so... The fact that that uh, there were folks that you might call bohunks kind of indicates that there might have been a certain population of them there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there was 
quite a few families like that. Any foreign speaking folks there? Uh, no, not that I remember had any trouble understanding them. <laughs> okay, they didn't speak broken English. Mm -hmm. uh, how did families get their groceries and other supplies in the camp? Well, they had a big uh, uh, store like there. There must be a picture of it in some of these albums. And uh, you could go there and get supplies. Okay, this was a company store? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you ever recall uh, Erickson's grocery store bringing supplies out? delivery trucks or whatever. Somebody bought supplies out, so I suppose it could have been them. Okay. <clears throat> Did you know uh, Cecil Cox and his family? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, what kind of work did Cecil do for the company? What did he do? Some of them pictures should tell. Okay, did he, was he a, a locomotive engineer? Does that sound familiar? He could have been that so long ago. Yeah, I know. I was sitting here thinking the same thing, you know, that these are maybe things that you haven't thought about for, no, for years. who knows how long. <laughs> so, yeah, it, I'm sure it is difficult. <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's shift a little bit then. Uh, what was the school like in the logging camp? Did they have a school? Oh, yes, they had a school. And uh, had a teacher, what was her name? I can just see her, but her name is... Okay. Uh, what grades were taught then? <clears throat> to the eighth. To the eighth mm -hmm. grade, huh? And after eighth grade, what did the kids do? Where did they go? I don't know if they went anywhere. Okay. They, they didn't go on to a high school? Not that I remember. Okay. Uh, were the teachers related? to camp members? Did their husbands work in the woods or were these uh, teachers people that the company brought in? I don't know whether the company brought, in, brought them in or not, but they were good teachers. I can remember that. Okay. Uh, okay, what about church services? Was there a designated place for religious worship? Yes, we had Sunday school. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, was there a minister? Well, at first it was just local, and then they called uh, the pastor of the Pines. George Redden was his name, and he was a conducted services. And mm -hmm. Did he live in the Sunday? camp? No, he didn't live in the camp. He just came out. Okay. And then. Uh, what can you tell me about George Red? Well, he was a good man. He was always helping somebody. I can remember when lady, her husband was killed, and she had uh, two little girls, and she was going to go back east someplace. And I can remember him helping her and tying all the things on the car and one thing and another and helping her get. So he was a real good mm -hmm. lay person. Were there any other activities out in the camp that he was involved with besides the Sunday services? Any youth activities? 
No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, a couple of the fellas had mentioned an organization called the Friendly Indians. No, that doesn't ring a uh, bell with and, me. And that George, Mr. Redden, was <coughs> the head of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what sort of religious denominations do you call being there? Do what? Do you recall being out there? What kind of religious denominations were Not just Christian. Okay. Okay. So there were Catholics and Protestants mm -hmm. and Lutherans. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did they all attend the same services? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, anyone ever baptized or married out in the camps that you recall? I remember attending a baptism down by the river, but I can't. But anyway, I know we had Sunday school. Okay. Church. Okay. Let's talk a little about women activities when they're in the camps. When the men were at work and the children were in school, uh, what did the women do with their time? Well, you had washing to do, and it was by hand. It wasn't. There were no washing machines. No, no, we didn't have any washing machines. And uh, kept you busy washing and ironing and cooking and. Do you ever do any canning? No, not then, I don't think. Okay. Uh, speaking about the washing, uh, did they ever bring in things like uh, gasoline run washing machines? Yes, it seems like one or two had machines like that. But the company didn't provide No. Them. Okay. okay. Well, besides the washing and cooking, uh, did w wives make things for around the home? Make things? What do you mean? Furniture or cooking? Oh, or? Clothing? Uh, oh. Things for the house curtains. Oh yes, we all made curtains of one sort or another and had in the windows and so on. Okay. We didn't just have bare windows. Okay. <laughs> uh, what sort of social activities did women do together for entertainment? Say the the washing and the cooking and whatnot was done. Did the women get together and, and socialize? Yes, they had a club. What did they call the club? They had a hall called Tillicum, means friendly or something like that, and we'd meet there. This this was a hall. Yeah. The Tillicum Hall. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And what did you do there? Well, we held socials there. I can remember that. And it was just a get together, just quite a talk, visit. Drink coffee, uh, yeah. and talk about the family or the mm -hmm. kids, and, uh, uh, share information as mm -hmm. far as uh, illnesses or things like that, mm -hmm. or child illnesses. Okay. Uh, were there any kind of community services that the women participated in? Well, they had. Uh, Sunday school and church that most of them did. Of course, there were some that didn't go, but then a lot of them did. Mm -hmm. uh, any participations in school? Uh, did the mothers help out uh, 
as like school assistants or something. It seemed to me there was one or two that did. Uh, <laughs> where did the women have their children? In camp? Mm-hmm. Did they? They didn't, uh... Let's see. No, they went to town and stayed with somebody. The band? Yeah. Okay. Uh, if children became ill, or injured out in the camp? How did they get medical attention? Well, they'd call a doctor, I guess. I know they had the, the locomotive. If anybody got hurt from the job or anything, why they would bring them in, post haste and ring a bell or something on the thing, you know, and everybody would rush down to see who was hurt. And they brought them in. And, uh, okay, so that was from the woods. Would mm -hmm. they do the same the woods, thing if yeah. someone was injured uh, in the camp? Mm -hmm. If a wife was injured or a child yeah. was, you know, severely sick or hurt? Mm -hmm. uh, and then they'd run them in on that to town? Yeah. Did they have any medical facilities there in the camp? Uh, if a woman's husband was killed on the job, uh, what became of his widow and children? Well, they moved out to other relatives. Like I said, this George Redden helped this woman that her husband was killed, that he helped her load her car and tied things on. And So, uh, could they stay in the camp if they wanted? I suppose they could, but then there was no way then for them to earn a living. Yeah, and it w and they were company owned houses. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Was working in the woods a dangerous occupation? Oh yes, but then you had to be careful, you know. Okay. Were men ever injured or killed while working on the job? Do you remember? Yeah. Do any particulars come to mind? No, one of this one lady that I was just talking about that her husband was killed and uh, she had relatives someplace and this George Redden helped her load her car and had things on and so on and so she moved. Do you remember how her husband was killed? Something about he was setting chokers in the and uh, the log flipped the wrong way or something and smashed him. Mm -hmm. Do you recall or ever hear the term a widow maker? Yes. What was that? Well, it was some some way they were handling the trees or something. I can remember if they didn't do it just right, why it would flip the other way. Something. I can remember them talking about this. Okay. You said that your your husband operated a lidger work. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, do you suppose that that was dangerous work? Maybe not so much for the person inside, but didn't that piece of equipment pull the logs into the landing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I wonder if people ever got hurt during that process? Well, sometimes, but then they were all careful. They really were safety conscious. Mm -hmm. Tried to see every angle of it before. Sure. Uh, okay, so if, 
so if somebody was injured then, uh, what would they do to get them to medical attention? They had a locomotive or something that would take them to Bend, okay. load them on that, and away they'd go. And they had a hospital there mm -hmm. then. <clears throat> uh, what do you remember about the kinds of entertainment that were available in the camps? Well, they had a baseball diamond for the men. They played baseball, I think. And then uh, they played cards in the evening. And um, have radio. Some of them had radio. And, uh, they kind of had picnics down to the river. I can remember that. Then they'd go to Benham Falls or something. I know they'd load a flat car with a lot of people and they'd go to Benham Falls for a... Was this a company-sponsored picnic? I think so. I think that was it. And what... Did anything in particular occur at those picnics? Uh, was it a big affair? Lots of people there? Or Lots of people. They had horse races and one thing or another like that. And, and uh, there was a meadow out there then that's all dried up now, but at that time it was a regular green meadow. And uh, let's see, was this an all day affair? Yeah, pretty much so. Huh? Any, any particular time when uh, that picnic occurred that the company sponsored? So was it over a holiday or? No, I suppose they had a time. Seems to me September, but I. Maybe Labor Day. Labor Day, yeah, could be. Yeah. Uh, so, were there activities for kids to do out there, uh, games they played, or did the company, you know, sack races, things like that? Yeah, they had races, and sack races where you'd put your leg in and then, and then run, you know, with two of you with one of your legs in a sack. You know. Three-legged three race. Yeah, three <laughs> How about tug of wars? Yes, they had tug of wars. I guess. <laughs> Anything else that comes to mind? No, the baseball. I know we used to. We could say they had a barn or a shed that the horses was in and the baseball diamond was back of that so we could sit on the shed and watch the baseball game. <laughs> what were the horses used for? Well, let's see. Now I'm getting mixed up between the schools and the... What was the question again? I, uh, you had mentioned that there were horses and the horse barn was behind the, the baseball mm -hmm. field. And I wondered what the horses were used for out there. Well, it was what the kids rode to school. Oh, they did? Yeah. Okay. It, they weren't used uh, in the woods operations then? No, not those. Okay. Okay. Uh, what about winter activities, entertainment? Uh, what did folks do in the wintertime? They didn't play baseball. No. <laughs> okay. Let's see, what did we do in the wintertime? Is there any 
ice skating, skiing. Yeah, well, I know they had dances because they had um, covers along to put over the horses. Covers along to put over the horses. I yeah, don't horse blankets or something that yeah. come around so they didn't get so cold. Okay. So they weren't. They didn't have many cars out there. No. Okay. Uh, were the dances held there in camp? Yes, they had a regular hall. A community hall. A community hall, yeah. Uh, who played the music? Well, anyone that could play. So people there was always somebody who could play the piano or the guitar or mm -hmm. something. And people there in camp then provided yeah, the music. their own. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> what were those dances like? Were they a kind of a community affair? What did what did did, did parents do with their kids? When they went to the dance, rolled them in a blanket and rolled them under the under the seats, and they'd sleep under the seats, and the, the people would dance and so on, and the kids they, would sleep. Did they go late into the evening? Oh yes, they'd go to the next morning sometimes. And they did, huh? Yeah. So the folks out there knew how to have a good time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ever any uh, alcoholic beverages out there? Did they? Well, some, but not too much at that time. Mm -hmm. That came later. Okay. Uh, did they ever get rowdy? Well, not too bad, as I remember. Uh, you talked about the the baseball field, and, and where did the the fellas get the the equipment, the bats, and the gloves, and the balls? And did the company sponsor any of that? Or? Must have been because they always seem to have the bats and the balls. And mm -hmm. uh, did they play other teams outside of the camp? It seemed to me that they did, but where they were from, I don't know. Okay. Did your husband play baseball? No. No, he wasn't a baseball. No, he wasn't a baseball. <laughs> okay. What did What did your husband uh, enjoy doing uh, when he wasn't working? Well, he liked to hunt and fish and all that sort of thing. That seemed like he was always busy mm -hmm. keeping the rigs in order so they could work the next day. Where do you like to hunt and fish? Or any particular favorite spot? Let's see, where did he used to go? No, I don't remember. It seemed like it was just fish most anywhere then. Okay. Uh, what did folks do with their evenings then? I talked to a couple of the fellas. They say that there was a, uh, they say a beer hall or a tavern, a pool hall. Uh, was there that sort of thing that you remember being there? It had slot machines in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I don't remember anything. Okay. My uh, dad was a, what would you call it, a, a sheriff or something. and so. <laughs> Your dad was the sheriff? Yeah. This was in Fremont? Yeah. Well, how about that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> what about Friday or Saturday nights? What did people do with those? Evenings. Well, there was a lot of card playing. I know, pinochle and 
devil name seems to me a name West runs in my mind, but I can't remember how it was played. <laughs> I just remember the name. And people would get together mm -hmm. and, and do those yeah. things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I, I assume that dancers were on those nights. Oh, right? yeah. Okay. Uh, Do you ever come in to, to bend on a Friday or Saturday night? Well, sometimes, but that three miles off the highway was a terrible road. Mm -hmm. So unless you had a good vehicle and so on, why well, you didn't venture out. Okay. So, <clears throat> but after you and your husband left the camp and moved into bend, uh, what would you say a, a typical Friday or Saturday night might be when the loggers hit town? I don't know. They just had a good time. <laughs> okay. Uh, any particular places in town that you recall that they might have patronized? No. Okay. Do uh, you remember a place called the Hippodrome? Mm-hmm. What was that? Well, that was a, a dance hall at first. The dances were held there. It was a big, I can remember, it was a big hall, a big floor, and uh, they held dances there. Did you ever go there? Yeah. Did you? Okay. Uh, how long was it open, or I should say maybe when did it close? Do you recall that? I don't know. I suppose as long as anybody stayed there, probably. Uh, when did it shut down for business? Was it still there in the 40s or 50s? I don't know. Okay. okay. So then, once in a while, you went into the Hippodrome mm -hmm. uh, to dances, you and your husband, mm -hmm. uh, and it was in then. Yeah. Uh, did it draw a pretty good-sized crowd? Well, fairly. It wasn't really crowded, but then it had its share of entertainment. Anything else uh, for entertainment there besides dances? Not that I can think of. Okay. Did you go there, ever go there while you were living out in the camp? to me we did once in a while but uh, I remember all right uh, what about labor disputes what hmm. uh, so do you, do you ever remember any problems with labor disputes uh, with the company no I don't okay uh, did they have a union that you're aware of not that I was aware of. Okay. Uh, now you mentioned that you and your husband left the camp uh, because there was a shutdown or mm -hmm. something. What can you tell me about that? Why? Why did that occur? Yeah, why did it occur? I don't 
know why it occurred, but then I know that he took an examination to work in the post office on steam or something like that. Uh, do you remember how long this shutdown was? No. Okay. Do you remember about what time it occurred? It must have been just before you left the camp. Yeah. Uh, when was that? See, when did we leave the camp? That's been so long ago. It was when the <clears throat> new post office opened on Wall Street. Okay, uh, so anyway, you you and your husband's reason for leaving was because there was this shutdown. Yeah. Okay, and it didn't look like there was going to be work for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's shift a little bit to the 1930s then. Uh, how did the Great Depression uh, affect the lives of people living in the Shelburne camp? Well, I don't exactly know how to answer that. <laughs> well, what what do you remember life like then uh, during the Depression there in the camp? Well, I don't remember that we needed anything. I know when they went back to work, the, the company put the fellows to work first that owed the money. It, uh, traded with them when the times were hard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, was Chevron Hickson able to keep people working during that time, during the Depression? Not all the time, no. Because that's when we moved to town. Okay, so in a way it sounds like then it was because of the Depression and because of maybe uh, logging camp mm -hmm. or logging operation shutdowns yeah. that you decided to move. Mm -hmm. uh, so things might not have been real good? No. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, if there were like at this time that you and your husband left, uh, uh, people were out of work. Uh, how did, let's just speak about you and your husband, how did you and your husband make ends meet? How did you pay for groceries uh, or pay your bills? Well, I don't remember we had any trouble. He must have worked. They must have paid him for work on the machines. Do you remember if many people left at that time uh, because there was a lack of work? Uh, the bachelors, for example. Uh, do you remember there being fewer bachelors at that time or if, if families uh, that weren't working felt like, well, we have to leave and see if we can find something where we can work. Does any of that come back to you? Is, you know, more people moving away at that time than, say, at an earlier time? Or did they stay? Well, 
That's 40, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Well, let me ask another thing then. Uh, were things kind of tough at that time in the, during the Depression? Well, depends on how you looked at it. If you were used to having everything you wanted and so on and so forth, I suppose it was hard on them. But if you just went along with what you got and so on, well, you made it fine. Kind of like today. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Uh, do you ever remember... Did people poach game at that time to put food on the table? Mm -hmm. Did they? Do you remember any particular stories about that? Well, I know we used to have a government man lived a sort of a game warden, I guess, or something about a mile from us, and he was a bachelor, and we used to have him to eat, you know, every once in a while. So we'd have to find out whether he was going to stay or whether he wasn't, whether, whether we were going to have ham or if we were going to have deer meat. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, during that time, if, if it was kind of difficult, did your husband uh, poach a deer? No, that was before when, before I married him, I remember we had to poach a deer once in a while to have some meat. Okay, so this was back at Fremont? Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, but the government man, was he out of Fremont or was he more out of the camp? No, I think he was out of Fremont. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, but do you remember during the Depression whether or not, uh, you know, if, if times were tough, uh, people might look upon it as being a necessity? Mm -hmm. you know? And I was just, you know, one of the things that I'm trying to, you know, find out is, you know, how people, how people were able to cope with things if they were difficult, if they were not working. Uh, and not working, didn't have the money, and didn't have the money to get groceries, mm. then that doesn't leave you a lot of alternatives. No. No, they would uh, kill a deer, and they'd always send word out from the pine the game warden was, and then everybody would hide their, their deer meat. Mm -hmm. So what, it, it sounds then that it might have been a common occurrence. Mm-hmm. And the game warden lived in Lapine? Yeah. Okay. And somehow word would be gotten out yeah. to the folks there that the game warden was, was on his way. <laughs> okay. And what would folks do with the deer meat then? Or did they well, they'd hide it in the hay or someplace, you know, or casual observance wouldn't find it. Okay. And how did the, the game warden feel about that? I mean, these were tough times. Yeah, I know. Sometimes they, I know once they shot the horn off his saddle. <laughs> they did, huh? How did that occur? Uh, I don't know. He was searching through the woods and going along and all the ones popped. So then he didn't look any further. Mm -hmm. Were they aiming for his saddle horn? I imagine they were. I don't think they had murder in their heart. <laughs> That's pretty good shooting. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. That's what they were aiming for. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you remember what that fellow's name was? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And you don't recall when it was that you moved from the camp into to Bend? Was it before the Second World War? I don't know. Do you remember the old post office downtown? Mm. 
still there. I don't know what it's called now. When that opened up, we moved in then. He was had charge of was steam heated or something, and he had charge of that. Okay, so uh, when you, when you moved into town, you left the the Shevlin Hickson camp. Uh, I, I guess I didn't understand when you had mentioned it before. He had he taken a correspondence course. For uh, mm -hmm. steam, mm -hmm. okay, uh, and then uh, he operated like the boiler mm -hmm. in, in the new post office. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And how long did he do that? I don't. I remember he got so mad once. Somebody wasn't getting enough heat or something, and they went down and pulled some levers and one thing or another, and pretty near blew the thing up. <laughs> Boilers can be pretty dangerous yeah. that way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did he do any other kind of work before he retired? No, I don't think so. Okay, so that was... That sounds like that was working for the post office was mm -hmm. the yeah. last job, the yeah. last work that he did. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> well, if he went to work when he was 14, or thereabouts, for the company, and it sounds like he might have, he might have been out in the camp until sometime in the 1930s. It mm -hmm. uh, sounds like he worked for the company for quite a while yeah. in Minnesota and mm -hmm. in Central Oregon. Uh, and uh, it, it leads me to, to believe then that, that with that sort of, of work record, that things just might not have looked like they were uh, too good on the horizon for him to stay. I mean, that's, that amount of years is, mm -hmm. uh, is considerable employee loyalty. Uh, so it sounds like maybe it was during the Depression mm -hmm. things didn't look real optimistic. Yeah. So he took this correspondence course, learned about steam, and then got the job with the, the post, or taking care of the post mm -hmm. office. Okay. Uh, but you don't remember anything about being out there during the Second World War. No, I don't. Okay, so it must have been before that. Uh, and even though it doesn't sound like you were living out there, your husband was working for the company anymore, uh, when do you remember hearing about the company selling to Brooks Gandler? I don't know. In the newspaper, when you read the newspaper or whatever, was the first mm -hmm. that you heard about it, or did, did you hear from friends that, well, the company's going to be selling? Or... I don't remember. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> at the time that the company sold, uh, did you still have friends that, that worked for it, people that you knew who worked for Shevlin Hickson? I think so. Do you remember how how they responded to that announcement? No, that's different. Okay, they they <coughs> uh, they weren't surprised or or they were shocked or they were devastated. Mm -hmm. you, that you don't recall any of that. Okay. Well, that pretty much takes care of my question. Do you have uh, any other recollections that you'd like to share that come to mind?
Not now. I'll probably think of a dozen after you're gone. Not as soon as I walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's the way it works. That's the way all our minds work. Okay. Uh, your husband uh, knew Bill Bear. Oh, yes. Did he know him from back in Minnesota? I suppose he did. I don't know. Did they work together yeah. in the camp and you knew each other from out oh, there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, you remember if there was a, were there a lot of people who came out from Minnesota? Seemed like there was. Yeah. Uh, it followed Shevlin out there. How did, how did people get a job working for the company? I don't know, I guess the job is just there, so they... Okay, they swung by the camp and you asked yeah. if there was mm -hmm. any work and they either told you yes or no. Mm -hmm. Okay. You remember we have some big pictures somewhere. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the logger there that worked with my husband. Uh, did he... he was a high climber, what they called a high climber. George Tracy was. Yeah. down by the river. Mm -hmm. 